10.50. All you, y'all folks missed a whole lot of church already. Missed an hour of Sunday school, 20 minutes of church. So get in here, 10.50 the next Sunday morning. And then two weeks from today is our biggest day of the year for Sunday school. And that will be October 3rd. We're going to have something in here that y'all going to enjoy. So don't miss that day. I want you to try to bring everybody in your family that, on that big day. We're going to have a cookout for the kids, uh, some hot dogs, some, uh, some inflatables, and fun, hayride, all kind of good stuff. So don't miss it. That'll be two weeks from this morning, October 3rd. I'll tell you a lot more about that next time. All right, let's take our Bibles this morning. Open to Acts, the book of Acts, chapter number 28. This is called the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, not A-X-E, it's A-C-T, like act, uh, the works of the apostles. And as the Holy Spirit worked here in the early church, and the apostle Paul done got saved now, and we're coming down to the end of the book, the last two chapters of the book, and in this chapter, they're on a ship, and they hit a bad storm. Um, I have been on one boat in my life in a bad storm, down there somewhere down toward the Bahamas somewhere, and I'm telling you, that's a scary thing. Has anybody ever been on the ocean in a really, really bad storm on a boat? Anybody? Okay, there's two or three of you in here. Man, that's scary. We was on that boat that time, and um, it was taking us from one place to another. Some this, it wasn't it wasn't as big as this auditorium, and uh, it, that thing a storm came. And that thing started going like this. You could look down there and see the water. And then it go, like, oh my goodness! And you're holding on in your seat. That's a scary feeling. Now look here, what happened here in your Bible? Look at Acts chapter 27 and verse 13. And I want to show you, read a little bit of this story, and then bring you the message. Acts 27, 13. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosened thence they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocliden. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat. The Christ, the Christ is staying in the rocks. Which, when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. And we, this is the way life is sometimes. See yourself here. And we be an exceeding tossed with a tempest. The next day, they lighten the ship. And the third day, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars appeared in many days, many days appeared, and no small tempest lay upon us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and have not loosed from Crete and have suffered gain this harm and lost. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. That was Jesus. You know how you know that? Whose I am and whom I serve. He served and belonged to this angel, the angel of God there. Saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. How be it? Uh, verse 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it would told me. I want to preach this morning on this subject, something everybody has and nobody wants. <clears throat> something everybody has and nobody wants. Every person has what I'm going to talk about this morning. Nobody wants it. It's in the right mind, but everybody has it. You know what it is? It's trouble. Trouble. You are going to have trouble in this life. 
Listen, if you think everything's going to go to suit you your whole life, you are you're on some bad dope, buddy. Uh, you're you're just you're kidding yourself. It's not very seldom is everything going to go your way. It's not. You might as well get used to it and and toughen up and say, look, things happen in life that are hard. We go through storms in life. Now, God puts stuff like this in the Bible so that me and you, when we're going through it, we can say, hey, I'm gonna read, this is what Paul did, this is what Paul did, and that's what I'm gonna do to you this morning. Somebody sitting in here this morning probably is going through a a separation of your marriage or a divorce or a loss of a a loved one, a mom, a dad, a child, a, a, a brother, a sister, just one thing right after another, one disappointment after another, one bad thing right after another, you are gonna have trouble. If you know a man that's over 40 years old and ain't never had no trouble, I won't shake his hand. I'd like to meet that guy because he, he will and he is and it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't never gonna stop as long as we're in this world. The Bible said over there in Job 14, one man is born under trouble as sparks fly upward. A lady come to me in church one time, she said, Brother Danny, what does that scripture mean? Where it says man is born to trouble like sparks fly upward. And I said, it means this. If you go out in your yard and pile up some leaves and catch it on fire, which way sparks going to go? Up. Now, if you go out the next day and start another fire, which way sparks going to go? Up. And you go out the next day and start another fire, so no matter how many fires you start, sparks fly up. Right? And he said, that's how sure that man is born under trouble. Just as sure as sparks fly up, people, that's how sure we're going to have trouble in our life. Now, in storms this morning, you've heard me say it a hundred times, you are either going into a storm, you are either out of a storm, or coming out of a storm, or are uh, experiencing the in-between, one or the other. You're going in or coming out. There is no such thing as life in this world without storms coming our way. You just want to explain. You say, well, well, Brother Danny, I, I just had this perfect life envisioned and I thought I would I'd get, get married, we'd build a house, we'd have kids, we'd have, we all have, that's the American dream, nothing wrong with that. And you can have that, but guess what? Always, always, in everybody's life, there's some storm somewhere. There's a storm somewhere. You can count on it. You see what we call the perfect family? Sooner or later, sooner or later, there's storm. Sooner or later, something happens. You say, boy, I tell you, we had everything going good. And then, bam, we had everything. I'm not trying to sound negative. I'm trying to help you face reality. Reality is we're in a sin-cursed world. We are in sin-cursed bodies. And because of that, storms come our way. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. I don't know who here this morning's in a storm. I don't know who in here this morning. I have no idea. Maybe somebody here this week came in and found a little note on the, on the table and said, I don't love you no more. I don't want to be married no more. And your whole world fell apart. Your stomach went into knots. You ain't eat a bite since Tuesday or Wednesday. I, you can't sleep. I don't know. That may be, that's one of the worst storms that a person can go through. Maybe you've been to the doctor and maybe heard that doctor say that awful word that none of us ever want to hear cancer. We've had people in our church just in the last few months had to sit and listen to a doctor say, you talk about changing everything? You talking about changing your whole world? Maybe you've had to lay a loved one to rest out there in the funeral home and attend the funeral and look down and say, I'll never see my daddy again. I'll never see my mama again in this world. Buddy, storms come in life. Storms come in our life. I've been through some storms and I'm not kidding myself. If we stay here long enough, I've got more storms ahead of me. But I'm so thankful this morning we can take the model that the Apostle Paul here gave in the Word of God when the ship was in this storm and take some advice from it. Here's my advice. If you're going through the storm, here's my advice. Number one, you must trust in the Lord. That's, that sounds simple. Paul said in verse 30, 22, he said, Paul said, there shall not a, a, be a loss of any man's life among us. Psalm 18 and verse two said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom will I trust. Difficulty strengthen the mind just like labor strengthens the body. 
You know when a man wants to be strong, woman, you'll get out and, and you'll lift weights and you do like that, you do like that. You know, man, it burns and muscles and it hurts like when you're running up a hill. But you know what you're doing? You're making your legs and arms stronger. That burn. That's what trouble does to your mind. That's what trouble does to your spiritual life. That's what trouble does to you. It makes you wiser. It makes you stronger. It makes you more compassionate. It does all kinds of things. And so I'm telling to you that this morning, the first thing I want to say to you is this. If you are going through trouble, if you are going through a trial, if everything's dark at your house and you don't know what you're going to do, let me give you some good advice. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. He knows. He don't make no mistakes. He knew this was going to happen before you were born. He had it all planned out. I, I, I heard this little story one time, and I about shouted. When I, every time I think about it, I want to shout. And it said, uh, years ago, the way they used to run, they got a man in a control tower at the airport. And some of them, uh, the plane, plane don't fly by, by looks. The plane flies by them instruments. And they said, there's a man down there in, in a control room, and he's uh, down this plane at such altitude, this plane at such altitude, this plane at such altitude, and he's got, and they said, sometimes you can see a big storm there, and you're looking at the radar, and he said, they'd have, he'd have this one plane, it would be right in the storm. And he said, they had this other plane, it would be up here above the storm. And then he had another plane be below the storm. And that, the guy down there would be controlling what I, and I thought, you know, that's how the Lord is. The Lord's sitting up there in heaven and he's got, he's got Danny in the storm. He's got Jeff above the storm. Uh, he's got Terry, he got uh, 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 below the storm and then he moves us around. And that's, that's an encouragement to me this morning to know that nothing takes God by surprise. He knew it was gonna happen before we got here. Look, you can trust the Lord, people. You can trust the Lord. You can't trust the government, Amen. You can trust the Lord. You might not can trust your boss, man, but you can trust the Lord. You might not can trust your neighbor, but you can trust the Lord. He's never done wrong yet. He's never made a mistake yet. I look back now and see all the storms that I've been through, and I know that he was sitting there in the office. He said, I've got Danny in the storm, and just as soon as I'm ready, I can move him out of the storm. And I'm telling you this morning, the best news you've heard all day is, if you're in the storm, trust the Lord. He knows what's going on. He knows what's going on. He said, Brother Danny, I just don't know how I'm going to make it. I've lost my job and I, I can't pay my bills and I don't know what to do. I'm scared of the coronavirus and I don't know what's going to happen. I'll tell, so tell you what to do. Trust the Lord. Amen. He's big enough to make the whole world and the planets and the universe. He's big enough to understand what me and you's going through. Don't try to figure it out. I tell people all the time, earth's the place for trust. Heaven's the place for understanding. You'll understand it better by and by. Don't try to understand it. I don't understand why this happened. I just don't understand. I try to live for God. Paul could have said that. You know what? Paul could have said that. Paul could have said, Lord, I've been traveling all over the place preaching. I've done the best I could. Now you let me get out here about ready to get killed. But he didn't do it. He spent time with God, got up there and said everything's going to be all right. God, he said, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. You can't. You can't look at your circumstances and say, well, God must have left me. That is, God don't leave you. It's not got nothing to do with God's presence. You trust him when you are in the storm and when everything's going bad, when the bottom falls out, when things look awful, when you don't know if you're gonna make it. Listen, trust him. He'll get you through that. That's right. Amen. They say that, uh, I've heard this. It's hard to believe. They say they train canaries to sing in the dark. Turn all the lights out and everything and teach them little birds uh, to sing better in the dark. I, I think sometimes a Christian learns how to sing when everything's bad. My heart goes out to you if you're hurting this morning. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to lose 15 pounds in three weeks without trying. Amen? No appetite. I know what it's like to lay down at night and you dread going to bed. Because you think, I'm gonna have to toss and turn again all night. I dread another miserable night. And we all go through stuff like that. I know what it's like to think, what am I gonna do? That's the situation they were in. And that's the situation you'll be in one of these days. You can't avoid it forever. And what all you people that are, everything's going good for you right now, let me give you some advice. Prepare for it. 
Prepare yourself mentally. Prepare yourself physically. Prepare yourself financially. Uh, save for a rainy day. Do all that stuff. Get up because the storms are coming. Trust in the Lord. Let me say second. Let me say second. Second thing you do when you're in a storm is you ask God to help you. You know what he said? He said in verse 25, he said, I believe that God's gonna help you and it'll come out just like God told me it was. He'd been praying. He knew God could help him. He knew God would help him. But you know, when Paul, when Paul found out there was a storm, he went down and got down on his knees and said, God, what do you want us to do? Please help us, Lord. He didn't go get drunk. Uh, he didn't say, well, if that's the way you're going to do I'm just going to go get drunk no, 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 to make myself feel better. That's the dumbest thing you can possibly do. The dumbest thing you can do when you're, when you're in a storm is do something that's going to make it worse. The, the, the worst thing you can do is quit church. People, I, that's like saying, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in a storm, but I'll just hang over the side of the boat. Uh, leave the boat. Listen, stay in there. Stay in there. Pray. Trust the Lord. Uh, get, 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 get out. They said years ago, uh, a long, long time ago, 100 years ago, the only way they had to get across the Mississippi River was by ferry boat. And they said uh, the only way you could cross that thing a long time ago, 100 years ago, for these, you know, airplanes and stuff, Mississippi River is by ferry boat. And you'd go down there and you'd pay so much money and uh, the guy who worked there would take you across on that little boat and then he'd come back and bring people back, back, back and forth at certain places. They said there was this real big, rich, educated man went down there one day, and there was a poor old guy in there. hadn't ever even been to school. Uh, and I can't have He's sitting there. He said, how you doing, sir? He said, I'm fine. How are you, sir? Uh, he looked down and he said, take me to the other side. And they got on out and, uh, and uh, across the way, this rich man, real educated man, thought he'd make conversation with this poor guy driving the boat. He said, uh, hey, man, you know anything about science? Have you studied science? No, boss, I don't know nothing about no science. I lived here. I never went to school. I never learned nothing like that. I, I never did know nothing like that. I, I, I didn't, and he, he went on a little bit further, and he said, uh, well, have you ever studied uh, history? Do you know about world history and American history and all of that? And he said, no, oh, no, boss. I don't know nothing about no, 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 no world history. Oh, I, never, I never studied nothing like that. And they kept going, kept going, kept going. Uh, he said, man, you missed half your life. And he went on a little bit further and he said, oh, do you know anything about politics and our, our government and how the system works? And he tried to make conversations. He said, I don't know nothing about politics. Well, he said, man, you've missed half your life. They went on, he kept asking, he said, man, you've missed half your life. And he just hushed. And about halfway across that river, that old fellow turned around and he said, boss, can you swim? He said, no, I never had time to learn. He said, well, you done lost all your life because this boat sprung a leak and we're going to the bottom. <laughs> and I'm telling you something, listen, they said, hey, look, Look, smarty pants, <laughs> there's going to be a time in your life when your education ain't going to save you. Your big nice car and your nice clothes and all that. Look, I got on a nice cheap suit today uh, I, I got over in Pigeon Forge and uh, I got on that, but this ain't going to save me. Listen, buddy, there's going to be times when your education, your bank account, your house you live in, the car you drive ain't going to help one bit. And when that time comes, you better know God and know how to pray and know how to get a hold of some help from somewhere that you can't help yourself with. Everybody in here will go through times when your help's got to come from up there or you ain't going to get none. You ain't going to get no help. And that's, I want to say, spend time alone with God. They say, oh, I've been going through. Oh, that's enough to make me lose my religion. No, it's enough to make you use your religion. You shouldn't throw your religion out. If you throw it out the window when you go to the hard time, it wasn't no good. Uh, what you got ought to carry you through. And by the way, Christian, the world out there watches how me and you go through stuff. You know how they go through it? Go get drunk. If, you, if you're going through a hard time, get drunk. If, if, you, if, you, if your wife cheats on you, just go grab you another one right quick and pay her back. That's the way the world handles You know how a Christian handles play, things like that? On our knees, getting help from God and doing the right thing. And then I want to say this. He said, believe in God's promises. He said, I believe God. 
that it'll be just like God told me it would be. In spite of what seemed to be an impossible, impossible circumstances, they believe God and the promises of God are unshakable rock amidst the crumbling stones of life. Ladies and gentlemen, the promises of God are sure, are sure. And nothing, nothing happens to you that hadn't happened to somebody else. You're not going through nothing that nobody else, other, no, somebody else ain't been through. You're not, don't say, well, I'm the only one that's there. Poor me, I'm pitiful. They've been a thousand people in front of you going through the same thing. Trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. I know when my sister who died with cancer and she just turned 40. She was diagnosed with cancer when she was 35. And Debbie, my sister over yonder, can tell you, she's healthy. I'm telling you, you talk about healthy. Run races, marathons, never was sick. And the doctor told us, he said, her healthy body actually works against her because the healthier you are, the more your body fights it, and it just made her suffer longer. And she wound up suffering. They gave her all the treatments and said, if it don't come back, by the time she's 38, she's healed. That's when she's 35. And when she was 38, it hit back. And it killed her. And she never did lose all her hair. She had real thick hair. And she, she lost some of it. But she got down to, it must have been, oh my goodness, I don't know, 70, 80 pounds, just skin and bones. And mom, mom would say, Danny, I was preaching somewhere every night. Mom would say, Danny, if you want to come see her, you better come on. She's going down. And this was early spring of that year. She just turned 40. And I went to see her. And I'd go see her, and she'd get weaker and weaker and weaker. You said, you pray? Yeah, we prayed. So people pray for us. They sure did. Listen, y'all. There's some kind of storm. My mom, and we had other storms going on at the same time, too. My mom waited on her hand and foot, washed her clothes, cooked her meals of my brother-in-law and, their, and Sandy's two kids for months. My mom said many times she'd be or taking Sandy to a doctor appointment. Back then they didn't have all the stuff they got now and she'd be screaming going across Old Fort Mountain trying to get to Asheville to get a shot of morphine because it hurts so bad. And I mean, she was playing the piano in church, leading the choir, write songs. She'd play piano, guitar, anything, you name it. It didn't matter what it was. And all of a sudden, bam, a storm hit. And look, we don't, I don't look forward to nothing like that. It, God knows that may be in me today. I don't know. But the truth is we all face something in your family or in your own self. Listen, people, we're in a sin-cursed world. We're in a sin-cursed body. There's storms coming in this life. You say, Brother Danny, you're making me just feel awful. No, I'm trying to have just see reality. Have fun. Enjoy your health while you can. Live it up. Pay your bills. Have, have, play ball, run, do whatever you want to. But just remember this. When the storm comes, know where to put your trust and know who's going to get you through it. That's right. That's right. You count your blessings when the storm comes. You say, how could you, how could you see your sister laying there dying and count your blessings? Knowing she's saved. She wrote poems. She told me what to say at her funeral. Knowing she, I know when I'll see her again. That day she died, it's the 4th of July. And I'd went in the other room, one of the boys' room, lay down and take a nap, and I heard mom come through the house screaming. Now, you're going to get that phone call one day. Mom come through the house screaming, and I knew it. I said, oh, here we go. And my daddy, I guess daddy didn't want to face it or something. He just shook his head, went and got his truck and left, went home. And uh, we stayed there waiting on the paramedics to come and, and, and get her body ready and take it out. And that was a sad thing. My poor mom, I, I thought it was going to kill mom, mom. She made it. Another 20 years, I guess, I thought it was going to kill her. You say, Brother Danny, how does a family go through something like that? 
I'll tell you, 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 you count your blessings. You count your blessings. I come down the road and say, well, thank God we're all saved. Thank God I'll see Sandy again. Thank God there's a heaven. Thank God Jesus paid it all. See, life don't make no sense. If there ain't no heaven, y'all, it don't make no sense. We don't have no reason for being here. There's a heaven, there's a hell. Jesus paid the price for your sin. And listen, the greatest thing in the world today is if you can lay down on your pillow tonight and say, it is well with my soul because that the storm's raised and the wind blow and the ship tossed but I thank God he's going to be with me through this storm that's the good part about being saved it ain't just good when everything's going good it's good when everything's going bad the truth is this morning you're going to have trouble first one of some of the real first real bad trouble I had when I was only 20 Five. You talk about hitting me hard, it hit me hard. And word spread all over the country. I was going through a storm. Ed McAbee was down at the camp meeting, down at Sammy Allen's camp meeting in Georgia. And, and Ed called me and he said, Danny, this is Brother Ed. I heard you're having some problems. I said, Yep, I am, Brother Ed. I'm hurting mighty bad. And here's what he said. He said, Danny, trouble will make you bitter or it'll make you better. You'll become a bitter person or you'll become a better person. And that's up to you what you do with it. And I said, I'm going to make up my mind. Bless God, I'm going to be a better man. And it made me a better man. I know a lot of people's bitter. I can take you to a house right now where there's a woman sitting right now and her husband left her probably 30 years ago and she's sitting there grieving herself to death, bitter. And every time you talk to her, it's just bitter. I just say, why did he do that to me? Why did he do that? Listen, you can get bitter or you can get better. Don't turn into a bitter old church member. Let it make you better. Y'all come on, girls, and just stand this morning by our head, please. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Y'all come on, ladies. We're going to sing a song for you this morning. The song Cassandra and Lucas sung a minute ago was out on the water, storm raging high. You ladies come. If God's speaking to your heart this morning, they're going to sing a song about the Lord bringing you through. And I wonder how many this morning, there's people here this morning that you're in the storm. You're going through the storm. Right now, right now, you're in the storm. You say, Brother Danny, if something don't change soon, I don't know what's going to happen in my life. I may be, I may have cancer. I may be going to jail. I may be about ready to lose everything I've got. I don't know. I don't know. But let's bow our heads and pray. And when they sing this song, I want you to just slip out of your seat and let's get around this altar this morning. And let's do like Paul said and give it all to him. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, touch this congregation today. Whoever it is. Lord, I know there's probably 